Hello everyone, this is Jenna. We are going to start in one minute, so take your time to take a seat and we will start very soon. Thanks for joining us here this morning. So I think everyone's ready. So good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining workshop 315 here with all of us. I'm Jenna from netmission.asia. Uh, thanks for joining this workshop. Uh, this is a workshop proposal that is um, organized and initiated by you from different regions, including Asia Pacific and Europe, apparently. So, mm, okay. I can't see my PowerPoint right here. So let me briefly introduce my background first. I'm the coordinator of this Net Mission Academy, which we provide um, we provide online webinars to youth in Asia Pacific, and it's like a training session. We provide online an opportunity to youth in Asia Pacific to empower them with capacity to contribute to the community and in the generations. And somehow we inspired to hold these workshop sessions and try to uh, engage as many youth as possible, not only from Asia, but all around the world to join this workshop and we discuss on youth in internet governance for our digital inclusions. So before I move on to the actual workshop content, if you would like to get some more details or have a closer look to our workshop proposal or the policy questions, you can scan the QR code online or simply go to this uh, URL link to get some more ideas. I'm happy to see many, many young people who actually joined the uh, YIGF Summit and here in the room and so many other faces from different continent and, and yeah, I, I wish that this will be really helpful for us to exchange our insights regardless our background and regardless our countries. So talking about the agenda of today, I am introducing this workshop apparently, then I will briefly talk about our panel, then I will give the time for them, each of them five minutes and then uh, talk about their insights on our policy questions and we will have like a Q and A and remarks and of course more importantly to have like an open floor discussion then we'll have like around 10 minutes to have a summary because it is also important that we want to have like a simple youth statement included in our workshop report and see how we can do the way forward and how we continue um, our work on youth engagement in internet governance. So, so yeah, I pretty much included our expectations. So I will just skip that. Um, today, as we all know that you are the fast growing dem demographic on the internet and most of us are actually digital natives. And we are one of the biggest um, stakeholder in, in this digital era that we, we are the ones to help developed the future of the digital world together. And even uh, we have been talking about digital inclusions in the past few days, even in the workshops or in our YIGF, we know that the uh, we know that it's really important that you have to be part of this IG process. But that's why we are here today to have this discussions. And so Okay, I always press the wrong button on my laptop, but anyway, yeah. So basically, we want to start this discussion based on this free discussion question. So just first of all, would like our speaker to, to identify what's the major factor that they think that leading to low engagement of our youth in internet governance and how we can have better participation and how include, including youth from all different backgrounds can help contribute us 
to the development process of our internet ethics or policies and what they see our roles um, in these policies and our practice can play in creating a cyber environment that promotes positive digital citizenship and cyber wellness. So today we have five different uh, speakers from different uh, backgrounds, including civil society, technical community from different continents. So we have on my right hand side Edmund Edmund Chung from Dot Asia Organizations, and here we have uh, Elliot Mann from Australia, who was a student who's studying law and computer science, and we have J1 from Korea and Elizabeth from Youth IGF 2019, and we have Joan from uh, the delegations of Council of. Europe, and later on, of course, I will let them to briefly introduce themselves before they build on this their their side, their thoughts on the question. So, just save our time. I will give the time firstly to Elizabeth. Thank you, Jenna. So, um, this is Elizabeth Schaumann speaking. I am one of the organizers of this year's Global Youth IGF Summit. Um, that is, was now initially a project of the German Informatics Society, which is my association. So um, I wanted to briefly give you an overview of what we did this year and what conclusions I can draw from it at this point. It has only been a few days. So we had the summit on, on uh, Sunday and before that we have gathered um, over 100 young people from all world regions. We tried to really strike a balance between genders, between uh, geographical regions, um, and also between backgrounds. So uh, in a call for applications, we then uh, tried to identify those who are quite engaged in different topics of internet governance um, and gathered them in webinars to focus on five different topics. Uh, three of those are actually the main themes of the, of the IGF this year, so digital inclusion, um, data governance, and uh, safety and security online. All of this with a youth focus. Um, our fourth topic was youth participation in internet governance specifically. Uh, we tried to already identify best practices. This is also what we are going to try in this workshop from my understanding. And um, our uh, fifth topic was um, the public discourse and disinformation and um, how that affects youth specifically. So in those webinars, we really tried to foster um, a discussion that didn't start at the beginning of the webinar and didn't end after the, the end of the webinar, but was more so a process that stretched over, over several weeks. And then when we gathered here in Berlin on Sunday uh, with, again, over 100 people from 35 countries, as far as I'm aware, um, we then got together and on the basis of what we have already been working on for quite some months, um, we then identified 11 key messages on different topics um, such as critical infrastructure, AI, public discourse, platform regulation, but also youth participation and a call to action to actually um, have young people in, in decision-making roles and in all, all levels of internet governance. Um, when we talk about low engagement, I would like to point out that I feel there's always more interest and engagement than there is opportunity, actually. And when we look, especially here in Germany, there were uh, with, the, with the European copyright reform, when that uh, was, was the, the big topic, um, we had so many people protesting. There was so much civil engagement, especially by young people, on a digital topic that they felt very, um, you know, passionate about. So I wouldn't say that low engagement is really the problem. It is more so lack of opportunity sometimes. It is lack of recognition. And sometimes it's lack of information on where to get engaged. Um, and I mean, we are all doing different things. I would love to hear what the others are saying about what they are doing. What we have been focusing on is apart from creating an opportunity to actually participate is also try to focus on capacity building and networking different people who are already engaged and who already do amazing stuff in their respective countries, in their respective regions, and to create more so um, a stronger voice. But even if the summit was like a, this global happening this year, I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't boil it down to like just one meeting, but rather fostering a more sustainable um, approach. So I'm happy that we're all here today. I don't know if I used up my five minutes already, but this was my starting point. I would like to hear what my other panelists are, have to say. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth, for sharing her experience and insights. And apparently what she was seeing, like um, working on online webinars or youth IGF and giving youth opportunity will be like one of our way that we can actually maybe helping out the youth to narrow down the knowledge gap in joining this internet governance discourse or the process by networking them with other people or building their capacity. So the next speaker will be Joel from, uh, from the youth department of the Council of Europe. So I would like to just pass the time to Joel to continue the discussion. Thank you. Hi everyone, Jean Pedro speaking. Um, I'm, uh, I'm, I come from a technical background. I study intelligence systems uh, at Queen University. Um, I will be um, speaking on best practices from the InSafe Safer Internet Centers Network. Um, and uh, I'm also part of the Lusofen Youth IGF Movement Chapter. And uh, as, as Jana mentioned, uh, I'm here under the Delegation of Youth Department of the Council of Europe. Um, going a little bit into the first, uh, first question about low engagement, uh, my thoughts were uh, if, in, in what kind of capacity do you want young people to be participating in? Uh, which means we can ask if uh, do we all do we need, really need to bring young people all the young people to the decision table? Is that even possible? Do we really want to do that? Or uh, uh, as I've been doing so far uh, with Insafe, do we want to give young people uh, the possibility, the method, the tools uh, in their own uh, environment, in their own way to participate? And what does this exactly mean? Um, the InSafe Safer Internet Centers ha have, um, have a strategy to engage young people. This means, for instance, through awareness sessions, be aware of what they are feeling, what their needs, and how they can contribute to uh, a better internet. For instance, um, and, and this is com comes really to listening, um, something that we sometimes forget when it comes to young people is that sometimes we don't provide the same kind of um, language and if, even if we speak uh, or if we think about the, the younger ones, um, most of the times they speak in their own way which sometimes that they don't have a direct translation to what could be a policy. So in some sense I do believe that um, reaching out to young people uh, has different levels and in Europe uh, we are not speaking when it comes to inclusion about access, but rather about uh, a, a positive engagement. And this, as mentioned, is about collecting from as many people as we can. And here comes the youth participation, uh, a thoughtful youth participation. Uh, in my sense, in my experience, uh, when I go to give an awareness session, uh, the, the point is to capture all the specific examples, all the details, all the difficulties from young people and try to combine them and, and create good arguments. Those good arguments are then, can then be provided or presented here in this space, a space where now we are addressing the issues, now we are connecting those young, those young people to the right stakeholders. So in some sense, the low engagement question uh, is really um, about thinking if we are doing the discussion in the right place uh, and what kind of discussion we are uh, having in the different places. How can, how can uh, the young people opinions be useful? Well, I think that we would all agree since we are very young in this room that we have a lot of new perspectives We've been using internet uh, constantly and trying to make it better. So in a sense, different opinions raise better arguments and better arguments get better solutions. I think that I'm pretty much 
closing by, but I'd just like to uh, address the last part. Um, thinking about the cyber well wellness uh, among young internet users uh, is very important. And uh, another example that I would like to raise, but I think Dominic, which is also in the room, would be the, the best person to speak about, is a little about the, what Council of Europe has actually been using to achieve this. I don't know if, Dominic, I can give you one of my minutes so, so that you can. Well, thank you very much for <laughs> just pointing me out in the floor. I think there's not um, a lot that I can say within these last one minute that maybe you have of your speaking time. Um, but when we're talking about engaging young people, I think there's a big question on um, what is the output that young people get when they are participating. And oftentimes, I personally have the impression that this output is, is not very big. And I think it must be very clear that if we want to engage young people and if, they want, if we want them to be part of this discussion, we also need to ensure that they have a platform where their voice counts and not that they are just here in the room um, saying something that nobody cares about. And to be fair, I'm slightly disappointed when I look around the room, we're explicitly in a youth session, but I see a lot of people just typing on their laptops. So I'm actually wondering if this discussion is fulfilling the conditions that it should. So yeah, this is a little bit of a hint to the people. If you want to have a fruitful discussion, I would like to invite you to take your laptops away and follow the discussion and listen to the panelists. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dominic and Joel. And I, I believe that two of you have raised this, like like an argument point where we can have a more fruitful discussion later later in this workshop. Like, uh, do we actually really want to bring all young people on the decision table or where should we find our role actually in this internet governance ecosystem where we can actually make maybe practical contribution and to whatever you think that will be helpful for our group of young people to get prepared for this digital A or even just prepare for the decision making process. So building up on that, our next speaker will be Elliot Mann from, oh, it's you. It's Elliot Mann from Australia who study law and uh, computer science at the same time. So let's see, what's your opinion on that? Thank you. Thanks, Jenna. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Elliot Mann from Australia. I'm here at IGF as part of Internet Society's um, IGF Youth, Youth Ambassador Program. Um, I'll first start off by saying how thankful I am to ISOC for giving me a place here um, and to Dot Asia for helping organise this workshop. I think it's really, it's really valuable to everybody um, that we do have a place to discuss youth and internet governance. Um, because after all, as we said at the start, youth are the fastest growing demographic on the internet. And it's as they get more involved on the internet and appear more on the internet, um, it's going to be more important that they get involved. Um, I do study at Swinburne Law School and work at CIA Legal, but I'll also preface that I'm speaking here in my own personal capacity. Um, I want to talk about three things initially at the outset. First of all, I'll talk briefly about the situation in Australia with getting youth involved. I'll then go on to talk about, maybe from a private, sec private sector perspective, why it's important to get youth involved in internet governance. And then finally, I'll touch on the internet ethics bit, which I think is quite important as well. 12 months ago, all I knew about ICANN was that they organised the DNS system. And that was purely out of my computer science classes. Now, I know a lot more, and it's a lot more complicated than that. There's an entire world out there that I didn't know about 12 months ago. In Australia, and apologies to any Australians out there, and if you do want to talk about this, I'm more than happy to learn about what's going on. In Australia, there's a dearth of information and involvement around internet governance at a very base level. Um, we've only just started having another national IGF this year, NetThing, which is a fantastic program held in Sydney. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there, it clashed with my exams. But it, was, it, was, it sounded like a phenomenal event, um, but it couldn't quite even be phrased as an internet governance forum. It was a lot more general. And internet governance as a whole isn't really considered a big factor. And I, and I think there's a couple of reasons why that is the case. 
I think at a very base level where a lot of the internet governance comes from in youth, a lot of it comes from the academic sort of side of things and I think there's a, somewhat of a lack of academics involved in internet governance in Australia. Um, so as, as a whole, I think internet governance in Australia and youth participation is only going to grow, um, but I don't, I don't have much to talk about it at the moment. In terms of why it is important that youth get involved in internet governance, certainly from a private sector perspective, internet governance is just a fantastic general policy making, um, international politics sort of background. You know, I, unfortunately in Australia, everything you do at university is about how do you get a job at the end. It is, it is all you ever worry about. If you are not doing something that leads to an in internship, leads to getting a job, you're wasting your time. And in my mind, internet governance is a fantastic way of merging law and computer science for me, but I also think that it should be seen by the private sector as a fantastic way of how people are learning about emerging technologies, how they are talking to people on an international basis and merging all that together. So, I think from the private sector, it's very important to recognise that internet governance does give some very important skills for people. And then finally on this internet ethics point, I think this is something that is incredibly important. And as youth become the fastest growing demographic on the internet, uh, it's going to be important that they realise that they can use the internet in different ways. The internet can be used well, the internet can also be used poorly. And internet ethics is about teaching people the line between what is good and what is right and what is wrong. And in my mind, personally, there's very little difference between internet ethics and ethics in general. In preparing for the ISOC IGF Ambassadors Program, we had a lot of discussions about um, proper ways of using the internet. And one of the points I made over and over is that if you just teach people ethics and critical thinking generally in their life, it will also carry over to the internet sector. Now, that might not be a fantastic answer for people at the IGF talking in an exclusively internet setting, but I do think it will form a key part of the answer. So, to summarise, in Australia, we're growing, it's happening eventually. For the private sector, there's key skills that are learnt in internet governance that should be seen as a positive in the private sector. When you're looking at youth, when you're looking at hiring young people, internet governance is a plus. And then finally, with internet ethics, we need to take a general approach and approach it just from ethics in general, and that will carry over into the internet sector. Thanks. Thank you, Elliot, for sharing. Thank you, Elliot, for sharing his um, insights to us, especially on an aspect showing what's the situation in, in Australia and from a perspective as a student, how it, it kind of telling us that we need to get ready for this digital age because we know that in the future may be different jobs or if you need to get involved in this industry, you also need to have certain educations or skill to continue your contributions and how you merge with what you have learned from school to the actual situation in reality. So the next one will also be an other youth, which is from South Korea, it's Jaewon. So please, Jaewon. Hi, this is Joan speaking. Um, before getting started, I want to introduce my background. So um, I'm one of the committee member of KRA IGF, which is organized by KIGA Korea Internet Governance Alliance. And this year, it was the first year that we initially started the youth session. And before that, even though we had like eight years of KRA IGF, we didn't have any uh, youth session before. And this youth session has been uh, initiated by two of the youth that has been a fellow of APIGA, which is Asia Pacific Internet Governance uh, academy organized by ICANN and uh, KISA and uh, some of the members from uh, Dot Asia and the other um, internet related uh, company went to mentor and guide us. So um, for me, this year was really um, important year for us to getting started in the Korea 
to like get the youth get to know about what is the internet governance. Uh, for me, I think um, to include more youth, we have to um, let them chance to get to know more about what is internet governance, and then uh, that's why we should more invest in human beings and people. Uh, because um, but beside this, I'm working at the, one of the UN agencies in International Fund for Agricultural Development, and we fund for people and the youth, and um, some of the youth still do not really know about what is internet governance, even though they want to participate, and this is what made me feel like we need a kind of mentorship program or some guidance for the youth to get more involved in this program. Um, so even though they have participated for the fellowship or whatever for the initial start, um, many of them are getting confused about what are they doing here or what is these sessions about. And uh, most of the people do not know what to do after the fellowship program. So. Um, some of the uh, members of this kind of fellowship made the group in Asia Pacific called Youth for IG, which is the first uh, youth driven um, coalition for us to guide the youth around the Asia Pacific region. So we have made the mentorship uh, working group for uh, the local mentors and local mentees to get connected and let them know about how to apply for the fellowship, how can they link themselves into the internet governance even though they did not uh, study in uh, computer science or law background or policy. Since there will be uh, always local mentors in their region to talk in local language, they can always feel more comfortable in uh, getting to know about these um, issues when they were not that aware of before. So that um, in the end of those kind of program, I have realized that um, it is first important to get include people and that's why we need more program for the mentorship and guidance and for them to get more guidance and to have more sustainable kind of um, participation, we need to let them know why is this so important topic for them to know because as Elliot has earlier mentioned, uh, these days everyone is uh, looking for the practical point of them to joining into those kind of issues and program and uh, we should be there to give them the proper reason for them to get uh, in uh, joining this particular issues in their own way. So uh, that's what we were here for. Um, so we were, um, I think some of you have already seen the Youth Athletics, the book uh, made by the uh, Creating Networks program and the Youth Observatory. We have uh, published a book about what did the other youth in all around the world have been doing for the internet governance. So that way they could refer to the book and see, oh, this person has major different ma uh, stuff, but still they are somehow engaging in uh, internet governance in their own professional way. That's how they get linked to those kind of things because other than that, they would never know how they gonna continue their journey without any guidance. So uh, in conclusion, um, if you are kind of expert in this field, I would like to encourage you to guide the people around you. If you see any use around this IGF, please talk to them and give some guidance so that we can have more use included. Thank you. Thank you, Jaywon, for giving us your ideas, your opinion on on the situation in your area, and seeing that actually youth maybe lack of awareness or um, knowledge about internet governance, and that will be something. That's why we are here in the room for for helping helping us, our generations, to narrow down the, uh, the gap of knowledge and understand more about internet governance. We've been hearing young people talking a lot on how do we think uh, we can contribute to internet governance. And of course, later we will have like a remark sessions or Q&A and then have an open floor. But before we move on that, we would like to hear from Edmund, who's actually working, uh, working in the technical community 
community, from uh, .Asia organization, to give us a comment from your perspective, from as a technical person or from a private sector, how do you see youth in internet governance and how we can contribute? Thank you. Thank you, Jenna. And, um, this is Edmund Chung here, um, and thank you for having me here. Thank you for having someone who's not so young anymore uh, be on the panel to you know, uh, shake up the diversity here a little bit. Um, I, I, I'd like to share a little bit, because uh, I guess I start, when I started, um, I was relatively young. That was 1999, uh, when I just graduated and started participating at Internet Governance in, at, 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 at ICANN, at IETF. Um, and, and I guess that particular experience really led me to 10 years from there, um, in 2009 uh, at .Asia, I helped start the um, NetMission.Asia program, which is one of the first uh, youth engagement program on internet governance around the world, one of the first few back then, uh, which really spawned a number of programs, the, the YIGF in Asia, APIGA, uh, the Asia Pacific, which is the Asia Pacific Internet Governance Academy, uh, which um, I think a number of people around the table have, have been at. Um, but more broadly speaking, helping spark a kind of youth IG movement around the world. Now, many of the national and regional initiatives have a youth component in there. And I'm quite excited that 10 years from then, now in 2019, um, I'm here sharing some of, some of maybe some of the, 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 the experience and learning. Capacity building is obviously one, one important aspect of, of youth programs and youth engagement and uh, getting young people to participate, you know, me going into ICANN back then, uh, really didn't know much, uh, just jumping right into it, um, but understanding the different views um, that inform the multi-stakeholder concept, I think that's, that's, that's always quite useful because uh, understanding how governments think, how businesses might think, how a technology, um, uh, technical people might think is important. Keeping it interesting and interactive obviously uh, is, is important. We've, I think we're, we're quite excited to have pioneered um, uh, the role-playing role or model ICANN approaches in, in youth engagement in, in IG. Um, a couple of things that I, I really want to draw, draw attention on. One is, in the last few years, we, especially in the last uh, five years or so, we're very focused on following up and following through. It's not just a program and then it's done and it's uh, 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 We'll, we'll leave it to the, the young people to come back or not, but actually having buddies, mentors, having additional uh, uh, fellowship programs that allow multiple exposures, because the first time you come to IGF, it's cool, it's exciting, you hear a lot of stuff, but the first time you come here, you might not be able to contribute a lot, whether it's IGF or ICANN. You have to, it has to be the second time, the third time, um, and, and, you know, creating a workshop, and th that, that allows um, young people to then actually get engaged. So I think one important aspect of, of youth programs is that multiple exposure. Um, so a couple of challenges that over the you know, uh, uh, last 10 years or so working on this um, that, that we've seen is uh, one important thing, especially from, from uh, Asia Pacific region, is a kind of apathy, right? As young people, we, we can't change much anyway, so what's the point? And going back to Elliot's point, this is not going to find me a job, so what's the point of uh, actually engaging and, and participating? This is something that I think um, in our program, you know, recent especially recent two years, we've been trying to, to focus on um, to, to, to really think of through how um, that, that, that young people through the program can realize that influence is possible, whether it's creating a workshop here at IGF, whether it's you know, creating a global policy for domain names at ICANN, whether it's helping write an RFC at IETF, and, and if, if you don't know all those acronyms, what they are, you can search them up, um, and that's part of the interesting exercise. But there are certain um, situations, like at IGF, that I can point to that young people actually made an impact. Uh, some people might disagree with me that this was an impact that was made. But a few years ago, I remember very vividly at a IGF meeting in Brazil. Um, that particular IGF meeting, there was a lot of young people there because the, there was a youth IGF uh, component in the global IGF. At the open mic, 
everyone from the young uh, youth community was talking about uh, uh, zero rating and, and you know, really, uh, really talking up the, the problems with Facebook on, on free basics. Just a few weeks later from that event, India banned this whole uh, uh, zero rating ish thing and, and, and free basics from, you know, uh, Facebook free basics from, from India. Did it make an effect? Maybe, maybe not, but I think so. I think the public outcry, the public outcry, especially from young people, did make a difference. So focusing on, on some particular issue is important and, and making sure uh, uh, young people realize that it, it can make a difference. Two more things I want to bring up in terms of uh, I kind of uh, my, my uh, learning from, from the few years of, of, of work here. One is uh, something that you might forget. Engage traditional uh, youth engagement uh, organizations. Um, you see a group of uh, young people from Hong Kong over there wearing um, blue uh, uh, windbreakers. They're actually from a program called uh, iFocus, if I'm not mistaken. And um, this is a program that we engaged, uh, Asia engaged the Chinese YMCA. YMCA, everyone I guess knows, is a very old traditional youth engagement uh, and youth organization. Engaging them, what that means is that once we engage them, now they have their own program and every year they have a sustainability and are able to bring young people, to sustainably bring young people to to uh, IGF and to these forums. So engaging actually traditional uh, youth organizations is just as important as, as, as uh, you know, starting new initiatives. And finally, back to Elliot's point, in the last year or so, we realized that job opportunities are important. And there are lots of jobs, I can say, in internet policies, and they won't end very soon. Think about it. Um, and being here and being part of and being, being uh, involved and engaged and participating will give you a, a, a good uh, opportunity actually. And we've seen that. We've seen some of our alumni of our, uh, of our programs get picked up by you know, different uh, uh, companies and organizations in the internet governance community. And I'll leave you last with this. Um, and we often talk about AI and, uh, and the replacement or displacement of jobs. One thing I'm pretty sure, well, one of the last jobs to be replaced is tech um, uh, internet policy, or in short, politics, because this is probably the last man standing to fight um, to keep that particular job. So you're in the right place. Uh, and I think, um, so four things, sustained support and multiple exposure, true employment, seeing the influence that, that, that young people can make, uh, involve uh, traditional groups, involve traditional youth organizations is useful, and point to job to opportunities. I think that's, uh, that's a re real thing. I mean, when you're going through university, when I was going through university, that's the top thing in my mind. How do I find a job? Well, I finally started my own company, but that's another story. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Edmund, for, for giving us a, us a really fruitful and detailed ideas on how you think about this topic. And thank you, f all the speakers who give us ideas and letting us know how important you think that um, sustainability in this youth community and how we give youth multiple exposure is important. So here, that's why the workshop kind of act like a platform for us to network with each other and then also like a process that we hope that you learn something from, from everyone, regardless of your age, your background, or your education background, or where you're from. I hope that um, the sessions after this, we will be have, having some takeaway. And I believe that after you all giving some comments and other people sit down there, I hope that you were paying attention and I hope to hear your, your comments or if you have any questions on what our guest speaker earlier, uh, on their speech earlier, please feel free to raise up your hand and to ask a question or make a comment. And no worry, I will try to keep the cue and then so that you raise up your hand and if I give you a look, no, no worries and you don't have to raise it multiple times. But before you speak out, please state your name and affiliation so we all can know each other. Okay, so Martin first. 
Hi, Martin Fischer, um, media and game educator. I've been involved uh, in internet governance and use participation for about a decade now, supporting different processes. Um, and I think it's uh, very great to hear the different perspectives from all, from all these initiatives. And I think they all contribute very diverse elements. So we have financial support, we have support in the application process, uh, supporting knowledge of the participants. We also have some degree of coordination between these initiatives. Um, I think the point on the uh, impact is still a bit of a mixed bag um, of uh, what impact we have, but I think uh, more impact will always stand in the end of a better process, uh, a progress or process that, uh, that we are designing here. Um, and what I feel is missing is, for once, a bit of a, an aspect of harmonization between the initiatives because everybody has sort of that one focus that they uh, can contribute and maybe there more coordination between the initiatives could lead to um, a ho more holistic approach of what they can offer to the participants. Um, I'm missing the aspect of attitude because also a lot of young people come here and they don't necessarily know how to contribute to the processes, how the IGF works, what to do exactly on the spot, and that's why these, uh, the point that uh, uh, the gentleman from, from the uh, private sector uh, brought up with the one-time visits is very particular because if you do not know what to do on the spot, you are not able to really use this opportunity to be here. So something that I would call for and something where I really would like to hear your thoughts is how can we guarantee continuous involvement? Because a big issue that we have at IGF is that every year we have a lot of people that are there for one time and that are probably overwhelmed by the process, but how do we create a process that year-long gets young people involved, prepares them to be there, and also makes sure that when they are there, they can make the most of that one-time opportunity. Thank you. All right, thank you, Martin. I saw the hands from the right-hand side before, and then other hand will be there. Okay, any other people? Okay, okay, so here first. Okay, uh, my name is Karsan Gabriel. I'm from Tanzania, affiliated with the Youth IGF. First, I'd like to say uh, a proof that young people have some sort of seat at the table is this workshop. Uh, as you can see, it was organized by young people, and I also uh, organized the workshop, and that is the benefit of multiple exposure because I, in one way or, an or another, I have seen the dividend of being connected to the internet and uh, awareness of the IG space paying off. So now I can share my perspective from my point of view. Uh, something I would like to say is that as young people, we are very privileged to be here, meaning that we should carry this very responsibly and be accountable. And we see a lot of young people and initiatives that have come from just being at the IG space. To mention example, we have Youth Observatory, we have Greece Global, we have uh, Digital Grassroots, as well as DreamNet Internet Voices. These are some projects which are really built by young people from the grassroots level and are trying to mobilize more young people to come uh, and understand what internet governance is and how we can use it, we can actually localize it to be relevant. Uh, what I would like to say is that we have the numbers in terms of demographic, or demographics. Young people are the majority of the internet users, which means we need to consolidate our voices now as to, co to coordinate together so that we can be able to kind of push more uh, to push more force when it comes to decision making. That's more impor important. And when we go back home, it's important that we are the ones to go to the legislative process. We come from a different uh, multi-stakeholder group, which means we are leaders in one way. And understanding the internet governance, we can apply it in our own uh, sectors so that we can push for a more inclusive and open internet. So let's at least, and if we cannot do it, let's at least even make the noise so that we can make this change. And it's important for us now to, as I say, we need to consolidate and coordinate to have a single youth voice that can really influence change. All right, I will take one more question and go to the panel for, for the remarks, then I will go back to the queue. So, you, yeah. All right, thank you very much. My name is Innocent Adriko from Uganda. Uh, I am an ISOC IGF Youth Ambassador. And before I say anything, I would like to say thanks to my friends over there. I know they're watching me. We have a remote hub in Kampala at the Uganda Institute of Information and Communications Technology. Um, so right from there, I would like to say that that is one of the ways we can still make the youth participate at uh, the IGF, the remote hubs. 
Uh, we've not looked into them, and they are very important for us. Uh, it doesn't cost a lot to, to make a remote hub and have youth engaging and even asking their questions. And besides that, uh, we do agree that the IGF is important, but it's not possible for everyone to make it here. So the question is, how do you make yourself present? That's why we're talking of the remote hubs. And also, um, the issue of national IGFs. Uh, it's easier to involve more youth uh, in the IGF, uh, I mean in the national IGF, than uh, here at the global IGF. So if we could focus on national IGFs and regional IGFs, because uh, it's easier for them to attend from there. Yeah, the youth form the largest demography of the, of, uh, of the, uh, of the internet, and we do believe that we are more digitally included on the internet, but we need to understand how important it is to us and uh, uh, why there's need for internet governance. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you for your comments. So I'll get back to the panel, see if any, any response and remarks, just to try to get it more interactive before we get back to the queue and also the, the questions on the remote participation. Yeah, I would like to... I mean, you all made great points, and I completely, um, I'm definitely on the same page. But for one thing, um, I don't really see the problem of people coming here, being here one time, then getting lost because they, I mean, sure, that could happen. But I see the problem rather that people want to be engaged and are here one time, and maybe it's a bit of an overwhelming experience, but you get to know people, it is in terms of how you work together and how you can approach people quite open environment. Um, and then they don't get the opportunity to transfer it to their own contexts or um, stay engaged where they are or come back to a global IGF, which is, as was pointed out by, by Innocent, just one opportunity to be involved really. What we need to keep in mind is that there is certain levels of privilege of being here that definitely need to be um, then transferred to where young people are actually because sure it could be our policy goal to get everyone here but everyone is a lot of people <laughs> so I would rather go for those of us who are here and who get these opportunities to exchange and build networks to then actually try and change something where we are. Um, I, I agree, El Elliot here. I agree completely. And, and to go to what Martin was saying, and also Innocent, I think it, it is it is a, a concern that people do come once and then fall out of the loop. I think thinking pragmatically, uh, w when it comes to like the ICANN Next Gen program and things like the IGF, the return on investment is the handful of people who continuously are involved. And if that means that occasionally there's people who go once and then don't go at all, I think. As far as I can tell, that's an acceptable risk. I think where the continuous engagement and involvement by youth needs to come in is at a national and regional level, and that comes from the remote hubs. I mean, I was completely dismayed this week to see that Australia doesn't have a remote hub, like part of its time zone issues. Um, but also, but it, it should. Um, it's, a, it's a large enough um, technology ecosystem or something where it should have a remote hub. And those are the sorts of places where there should be continuous involvement, there should be grassroots efforts to keep people involved. And I think this goes back to the, the attitude point that Martin was talking about, where the real, for me, the real takeaway of attending these sorts of events is that you're learning what is happening else, elsewhere in the world and you can take it back to your own economies and apply it there. And that might mean setting up a remote hub, it might mean at least for me, finding out what was happening in your own economy. And that is the real takeaway for me, and I'll continue to have that with me even if I never attend another IG event overseas again. I want to go back to the point that was mentioned about the holistic approach. And I, I would like to have a raise of hands for how many of us are coming from a youth organization. Could we have in the room, if you're coming to the IGF from a youth organization, please raise your hand. Exactly. So now we have a responsibility to get together. Uh, and we are doing it here, so take it as an example. 
uh, of one way that we should be doing, uh, which is speaking. And sometimes, uh, as we mentioned, there's also a, a lot of opportunities to be here, to take the support and uh, uh, sure the financial support is important, but it's also important that we don't create confusion for the ones that are trying to come in. Because, again, uh, as, as mentioned, sometimes we are doing things on our own or our own perspective and we are not thinking if oh, perhaps someone out there is doing the same. And if we're not combining the efforts, perhaps we are doing the same effort and achieving uh, not the, be the better result. Uh, a, a uh, a, an example of this is what was created with the youth IGF movements. Uh, there's currently a lot of um, initiatives, youth IGF movements, a lot of uh, parallel tracks, and sometimes it's not clear uh, about how do they relate to, how do they connect, and it's, it's sure uh, a fair point to see that engagement, uh, especially in young people, is being done on a local region. And that comes, uh, falls back to the, the argument of my, my introduction um, presentation, that uh, we need to reach out to young people where they at. And meaning that the remote sub hubs are actually excellent opportunities, but also has here uh, are the important link that is needed to convey the messages in order to get their perspective to the table. Thank you. Okay. okay. All right. We mean to jump back to our uh, to our queue to the ladies on the right hand side, but before that, actually, actually, we have few questions from the remote participation because it's like remote participation, we value the same as the people who attend on-site. So can you please read that questions out and see how we can comment on that too? Yes, hello, uh, I'm Mary. I'm here part of the Youth IGF Summit uh, and I'm a human rights lawyer from Armenia. I would read out uh, the questions from the remote participants. So we have a question from uh, Farha Deepa and the question is the following, how to create the National Youth IGF do we need to take local IGF accreditation? So far, this is the question. All right, that's the question from remote. Thank you so much. And then we have the lady on the right-hand side with the white sweater. Yeah, yeah, your turn. <laughs> Okay, uh, so I'm Maria Kornietz. I represent Together Against Cybercrime USIGF movement. I'm an ambassador in Ukraine. Uh, and so, first of all, well, it's like more, I wanted to comment. Is it okay to comment or is it time for questions? Okay, okay, thank you. Uh, so, first of all, thank you for the discussion. And as Dominic said, um, and everyone is looking at their laptops. Uh, anyway, I was looking at my laptop too because I was preparing my speech notes. Uh, yeah, but so far this is one of the most interesting discussions for me at the IGF. So if, as it was said, it's like one of the first uh, events like that at the IGF, right? Yeah, so I believe we should have more of that. That's first point. Uh, second thing uh, I would like to mention is that uh, I organize different events for young people in Ukraine uh, and it's more like raising awareness kind of thing and then they can come from different backgrounds, it can be like technical background, it can be artistic background, it can be political science and uh, the problem I face of course uh, is that uh, internet governance is such a diverse uh, thing and to understand some of the problems you need to have this complex world view and even um, well, understanding from like different spheres um, and even if I go to IT students and there is something about IT there is still a need for catching up uh, about the IG issues and I mean, it's still far from the people you need to uh, do a lot of work, like to get them to understand the issue. Um, yeah, so, and I feel this is more because uh, the IG issues are our, out of our like information uh, sphere. I mean, media are not talking much about it. Um, 
and this kind of stuff. So this is a problem to find something like intuitive and passional, some topic that people would like understand and they maybe already have developed their own uh, thoughts about that because they've thought about it before, because they've seen it on TV or something, or read about it a lot. Yeah, um, and the third thing uh, is that I hear us a lot of talking about like the employment in IG sphere, uh, and this is a thing to engage young people. Um, but yeah, sure, it's important, and maybe like right now to be in this IG sphere, you need to invest a lot of time. You need to like read, invest your time to go to the meetings and that kind of thing. But I believe we need more to work more on the like world view point what i mean is that for example if we take climate change or if we take like people volunteering on like their saturdays at the shelter for animals i mean they, they don't think about the employment right they just think they're do, doing something important like for the planet or they're for the animals because they care about animals and this kind of thing and i believe we need to develop this like understanding why this is like important and i believe it is um, and we also need to engage young people also from this point of view like because internet like it's you use it every day how come that it's not important like all all the problems like the majority of problems that concern you but uh, I mean, it's it's not that immediately uh, like what what you immediately think when you go online. You just like well, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, you I guess you see my point that we need more this holistic view and why is it also important in the daily lives, not just you know to get employment or like to travel. Yes, thank you. Thank you for so much for your comments. And I remember this, like one one hand, yeah, before we move on to the gentleman at the back, I remember this one hand from, from there. You first, then Adana, uh, the gentleman at the back, then we open the floor and I will keep the cue. Okay, so keep, keep going, you first. Hi, my name is Guilherme Alves, I'm from Brazil and I'm part of the Board of Youth Observatory, uh, Youth to Special Interest Group from Internet Society. Um, I would like to address um, the need for us to discuss the different levels of challenges that young people face to stay engaged in the community. Because when it comes, for example, to newcomers, we know that uh, IGF is definitely not a especially welcoming place to stay. And that's an issue that affects not only young people, but newcomers, but it affects especially us because uh, we know how hard it is to uh, stay here and between so many experts. Um, and uh, it's a challenge for our voice to be taken in consideration. Uh, but when it comes to older young people, and I'm talking uh, about like people like me, I'm, I'm 27, for example, I'm leaving the youth community, maybe. Um, I feel that most of our challenges uh, come from the lack of opportunities to stay engaged as professionals here, because we don't see many um, opportunities for us to work in organizations that are engaged in community. Um, I don't know if that's only uh, really reality from my region, for example, from Latin America, or is something that, or it's something that uh, you guys face in your regions too. Um, but we should, uh, we could speak about it more frankly because uh, I'm not sure if that's uh, again an issue from only uh, people from developing countries, for example. Um, also, I, I would like to give a just a, a few remarks from our youth atlas. Uh, it, it was um, uh, um, mentioned before. Uh, we gather testimonials from uh, over 150 young people from all over the world, and we see that it's really common in, in the testimonials. The people um, uh, uh, they, they say how important it was to have a, an opportunity as a fellow to stay here, because without a fellowship, they wouldn't. Uh, 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 be able to afford to travel, for example. And let's not forget that that's, this is the third IGF in Europe, and the next year it will be held in Europe again, this continent. So that's really a challenge for us because we cannot, uh, it's really common for young people, uh, they cannot afford to travel and be here in this uh, event. And okay, it's, you, 
you shouldn't need to be here in person to stay engaged in the community, but let's face the truth that if you really want to take, uh, be taken in consideration, if we really want to be, uh, have our organizations taken in consideration in this community, we have to be here in person. So, um, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. All right, thank you. Aidana first. Uh, so, hello, my name is Aidana. I represent netmission.asia. Uh, so the first question that I want to uh, raise is about, um, I think um, people do not really understand that being a youth uh, representative is a very unique stakeholder group in its nature because uh, like how, how long can you, can you represent a youth group, right? You cannot stay too long for this and you have to grasp this opportunity. Uh, like you said, like if you are come to IJF only once, you have to make the most of it. Well, throughout your life, you, you're going to be young only for once, like for maybe five, ten years. And then you will grow up to another stakeholder groups and eventually we all, all grow up to and become a part of other stakeholder groups. So we cannot, we have this very temporary, very like um, not long lasting opportunity to actually voice out our opinions. And I think that uh, this needs to be understood by all other stakeholder groups. and. Also, like when we talk about making our, ma making our voices heard, we are so focused about how, what we can do as youth, but we are not talking about what, uh, what should other stakeholder groups do. Because no matter how loud we raise our voices, if they're not appreciated by other parties of the discussion, if they're not heard by other stakeholder groups, then what is the point of actually raising our voices if they're not like they're not important to others. And I think this is the one thing about not being welcome here because, uh, okay, you can speak, but who, not, not real, not, not, no one really gonna take you seriously for that. And also, um, I think, uh, yes, and I think uh, one of the ways of uh, making uh, voices heard is maybe trans, like during the regional and national initiatives, what about making young people speak there and then carry, the, the other stakeholders group who have who have the opportunity of coming to global uh, level uh, events, they can carry those voices to the table where young people cannot be present. So what about engaging other like stakeholder governments and private sector and making them uh, talk to the young people in their regional initiatives and then bringing those voices with their representation to the bigger tables where, where young people cannot be present due to various reasons. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Adana, for making your statement. And I, I, I'm sure that everyone in the room would love to hear what people from other stakeholder group would want to know or what do they think you can actually contribute to internet governance. But we will have the gentleman at the back to give the last question first, then we will have like an open floor from starting from here. So please go ahead. Hi. Does it work? Yes, it works. Uh, hi, my name is Auke Pals. I'm a youth representative from the Netherlands. Uh, besides that, I'm trying to engage other youngsters to be involved into this process. Um, and I would really love to uh, encourage you all to participate in sessions, be active in sessions, make your voice heard. Um, and besides that, also what you take away from this international experience, bring it back locally and regionally and try to engage your local environment there. However, um, don't try to <coughs> um, let youngsters only talk to other youngsters. Try to engage with all other parties, like the government, private sector, um, because only youngsters talking to youngsters won't have that much of an impact in my experience. Um, in the Netherlands, we have a long history in a multi-stakeholder approach, talking with priv uh, public-private partnerships, and we try to engage every uh, stakeholder uh, in that aspect as well. So what we try to do is try to get everyone involved in decision-making processes, not only on policy making, also and try to understand each other. Uh, and you won't have to agree on everything. However, if you make what you stand for clear, then you will have the impact that you can make. Thank you. Any, any comments, any comments 
Wait, I, I have the cue. Any comments from the panel first? I think it's just important to sum up kind of the ideas that have been throwing around. And I think one that was uh, already mentioned by a lot of people is that uh, are we actually um, in a youth bubble right now? Because we are actually having nice conversations and raising nice questions. But again, it's not clear if we are making sure that that, that messages, that arguments are being uh, brought outside. And I think that the last the last comment also uh, refers once again to reaching out to the right people. And it's not clear exactly if uh, that means one-shot opportunities or a continuous strategy, but I think that there are plenty of reasons for why at least youth should be involved, either for professional reasons, if, uh, either for uh, personal motivations. All right, okay. Just two or three quick points. Um, I'm sure we need to broadcast this to the outside and not stay within our bubble, if it is one, but it also is important to create opportunities to actually exchange on um, and network ourselves. Um, I kind of like the idea of the expiration date of youth because I don't see it as a problem, I see it as an opportunity because even if we kind of move out of the youth um, group, which it will be the case for myself quite soon, but we still carry what we have done with us and then when we are in other stakeholder groups, we still have this view of having been engaged for years doing um, youth work and actually listening very closely to what young people are having to say. And I think this is like the, an opportunity for the first time that we have in this space because we had to grow into it and then we grew out of it, but we still carry it with us. And yeah, I think those were my two points now to you, Edwin. Edmund here. So building on uh, Elizabeth, what, what you mentioned, and is is really the, the part of the value is still in in the networking, right? So uh, it's it's network here in a global sense, but also going uh, uh, bringing the commu bringing the experience back to the local and influencing local uh, developments. Uh, but I think if if the voice from any uh, stakeholder group, regardless of youth or, or others, uh, need to be heard. There needs to be some focal points. So as, as a group, you will need to figure out some priorities, which particular issues are your priorities, and then consistently voice that out. Maybe for each year, it's, it's a bit different, right? But, but there needs to be some focal point rather than, than a too broad of a, uh, a discussion, I think. Thank you. Okay, thank you for the comment from the panel. I wonder if the lady on my right hand side is like an immediate comment on the youth bubble or the networking issue. If it's that's okay, I will let you comment it first. Then I will go back to, I will move to the next part, which like opening the floor. I will keep Stephanie in the queue after this, but you can comment it if it's on building up on the discussion we have for now. Hi, thank you. Um, actually, with the, I'm an, one of the youth investors. Just a second and I'm actually a part of uh, the Youth Observatory. So as a part of these two very important branches and uh, that have a role in this environment, first I would like to reinforce what you said, that we are in a bubble, like we have here a lot of uh, strong and I've, uh, rich uh, young people, but I don't see uh, really uh, uh, the word that I said tomorrow, like adults, adults here that can listen to us. So we are reinforcing things for ourselves and we are not uh, showing off. We need to show off. We need to uh, make them understand that we are uh, good enough to be in the main sessions. We are good enough to speak for ourselves and about the, um, the issues that they are talking about. Uh, us being our um, laptops and notebooks while we are in sessions doesn't mean that we are doing other stuff. And even if we are, we are because we are not, uh, we have jobs to do, we are uh, here, but we are, we left our universities, our masters and everything, and we have another life. So that's difficult. We are doing a double role, role here. We are only, like, like, like a Latin America person, uh, I'm here because I have a, a, a fellow. I wouldn't be here if I hadn't. 
is the fourth time that we are in Europe. My, uh, I'm from Brazil, so my money is very uh, uh, worth a little here. So we can, uh, we we have to see all the difference here. We are youth. We are talking only uh, in this youth bubble, and we can we have to put ourselves forward. We have to show to the young uh, to the uh, uh, adults or. Uh, was what you want to call, we have to show what we are doing. The atlas that were organized by the observatory and with the observatory uh, uh, in, uh, members only is an example of what the young power can do and what we can show, but that's not enough. So what I think is that kind of discussion is very important to, um, create something for us to organize ourselves, but we need to do a step forward and uh, actually show off, you know, to uh, m show that we are prepared for more. And I'm not saying we are not. Actually, I'm saying that we are, but we have to do this. Like, I, I, I hope that I make myself clear. <laughs> I think I I agree. I, I, it's a it's a problem. I mean, this is the as of next year, it'll be the fourth IGF in Europe, and there'll be zero in the Pacific region. It, it's it's an issue that faces everybody. And I'm not saying hold it in Australia because then nobody would be getting visas, um, but but it is an issue. And I think this is where one of the themes I've picked up this week when talking about the future of the IGF is really starting to push things onto the national and regional basis and starting moving things off in that direction. Because absolutely, this is one week a year and it doesn't help that it's continuously held in regions that are very far away from everywhere else, let alone the Pacific region. So I agree, I think there are issues. I don't think it's going to go away. Uh, I think there's considerations other than the diversity of locations when it comes to where they hold the IGF. And I think this is where, as youth, one of the best ways that we can remain involved is by getting more involved in a national and regional level. And that way you don't have to worry about funding and what, not, not in such a way that you have to come from far away to Europe. So I think it might, we might just need a reorientation of the issue. That's just uh, jean Pedro speaking. Um, I, I would just say bravo, uh, Portuguese. Uh, to you and take take your argument to to actually um, focus or perhaps bring another point to the table, which is uh, you mentioned that you were uh, given the opportunity to be here, and why not reflect on the pressure that we should be putting on the organizations that allowed that participation and allowed for many of us to be here. Aren't they also responsible that we keep showing or we present our messages, we raise our voices at the right place? Uh, shouldn't they be taking the role in being present to hear us since they gave us the opportunity? So that's like a couple of more questions so that we could keep, keep the discussion on. Understanding that we have like a bunch of questions and comments on this youth bubble problems, but we have a main queue that's been waiting for quite a while, and we have a lady on my right hand side just to let you to make the comment first, and Dominic will be the next. Hello, everybody. My name is Margarita, and I'm from a um, private sector, and I run my own company where we create global competence projects for youth around the world. So they actually connect online and the target um, age is 9 to 14. So first of all, I would like to target the issue of um, giving voice to the youth and especially the youth who are still in schools and they don't even know about opportunities like this. So how can we do that is the main question, but we are talking a lot about reaching out organizations who can sponsor trips for youth here. Um, again, a bit older youth, but there are other ways to do that as well. As somebody already mentioned, reaching out organizations that already work with the youth. When I was 16, I was in a Rotary Youth Exchange program and I was not involved in any commercial <laughs> business in that sense. A lot of people perceive Rotary like that, but it's a volunteering organization where you just go to another country for a year and you stay with the local families. 
and they are huge all over the world. There are so many kids around the world who go on these programs and they have no idea that they can learn much more than just cultural exchange. I mean, when I was going there, it was just cultural exchange mostly, but now with the internet, there is much more. They also have Rotex, they have Interact, um, Rotaract, Interact clubs, Interact goes into schools. So there is just so much exposure that already exists in the world for the youth. And not having these organizations that can reach the youth directly connected is just a shame for us. That's, that's number one, that there is already exposure. Number two, how about people who already have access to, uh, to youth in terms of trust? Such people as teachers, educators, uh, parents, adults, us, those who are not youth anymore. Um, they have direct access. They need to be educated. They also need to be united. We need to be educated. And yes, we are talking for the youth here, uh, which by default is wrong. They have to be here as well to talk, but they cannot be here. I'm, I was just talking to, with uh, David from Colombia. He's 14. And after going through the program, he set up his own organization. And now he's struggling to find funding, to find mentors, to find things like this where he can speak out. He has no idea. So if I can tell him, I can also tell 50 other students around the world. If our organization, we're running a community of educators, if each of these edu educators can share with their students, that's a much faster way to reach more engagement from the students. And they don't have to be here in that sense. We can set up I don't know, a Padlet sharing of ideas <laughs> and then just read out the questions. They don't come from live streaming, but they come from prepared educators who had talked with their students before. And that's much more motivating for students as well and for educators because a lot of teachers are disencouraged to do professional training because they don't see an impact they are making and the students have the same issue. They are motivated only when they see the impact. So if they know that there will be a direct impact at this conference, f at other organizations in other countries, they will be much more engaged than just reaching out to use directly without a reason, come here and watch. So that's the second one, unite, uniting teachers and educators, which I don't see here. And of course, somebody mentioned, um, I think it was, it was Edmund who mentioned the program that you have for um, preparing students to continue being engaged, right, into this kind of um, organizations and taking participation further. Well, also, how do we, somebody else mentioned, how do we um, make sure that students have, they know what to say? I think it was, it was in a different session. Um, but somebody from the UN said they don't really have the structured opinions or the, the youth think that things are too simple to be implemented right away as solutions. And it's true, but we can educate them. Just like the programs you do, I suppose, as you mentioned, we can do other programs or the same, unite together and educate them how to uh, look at issues existing in the world, how to target solutions in a logical way and at the same time that are perceived as serious issues, and they are, and how to find solutions to those issues altogether. We can teach them how to do that. And in that case, if they share their opinions, they will just know what to do because we have taught them. So this is not an issue of them not knowing how to participate in these discussions. This is an issue of us not teaching them how to do that. And yes, this is uh, the last thing that I wanted to share is there are a lot of courses existing online, digital courses like mine, for example, but very few people actually, very few organizers of those courses actu actually teach about um, the situation of the internet. Digital uh, literacy, ethics, very few people mention that 50% of the world doesn't have access to internet. So maybe we should have some kind of guidance or common framework for those kind of digital courses or educators that they should follow around the world to educate people not only on topics that they're focusing on throughout their programs, but also on the issues connected with the internet and inclusiveness online too. Well, that, that's also connected with the gender equality online. So thank you very much.
Thank you so much for for your opinion and comment. Yeah. All right, all right. We we have a really long queue, so I, I wish that everyone can keep it short. But we have we have one question from remote. Can can Mary just read it out, and then we go back to the queue. Um, we have a question from Abdul, and the question is as follows: In attempt to make youth fully participate in the IGF, what do you think are the opportunities that will motivate them to be more committed and participate actively? Okay, thank you. And Dominic was on the queue. You have other comments at the moment? Yeah. Um, well, I like very much the discussion that, that has come up now because I think it's very important. Um, I will try to be concise with my comments uh, because they, well, they will be. Um, one thing about the discussion before is there's a lot of young people here and I think we are not only representing uh, us personally here, but we're also representing young people in general here. So when we talk about young people, let's not talk about them, but let's talk about us, because we're just as much concerned. Um, I very much uh, also think that we have this problem of the bubble, the youth bubble, because we're sitting here in the room while the discussion is going on at the rest of the IGF, and knowing the format of the IGF, there's a lot of discussions going on in the panels, um, very little interaction, so when we are sitting in uh, the audience, the difference that we can make, it's, well, not very significant, I dare to say. Um, I would like to reflect on, uh, on maybe possibilities how we can change that. Um, for example, at the Council of Europe, we have a system that actually, it's called co-management, that forces young people to exchange with governments with decision makers, with other stakeholders. So taking this to an IGF perspective and understanding that as young people, we don't have institutional support for what we are doing. We don't have government legitimacy. We don't have a uh, business interest in these developments. We're always dependent on other stakeholders. So in an IGF context, I think it's very important that we demand, even though this format is open and it should stay open, institutional support from the organizations, that we have a structural voice as young people and that we have this backing so we're not as dependent on the goodwill of all the other stakeholders. So I hope that was concise enough. Thank you, Dominic. And then now we have Stephanie, then Martin. Stephanie. So I just want to add a bit about um, education because throughout the um, conversation, we didn't really stress on the role of government. And in Hong Kong, I see the reality is that we are very exposed to all this like Facebook uh, and all this emerging technology, but we are so vulnerable under it. For example, in the recent uh, protests, many of uh, many of uh, many of the youngsters they use like this uh, Telegram, this kind of applications. But indeed, they still lack the skill to really uh, to look for a really encryption and so on. So what I'm stressing here is that I believe. Uh, as youngster here, we can push our government to add more courses on digital literacy and digital citizenship to empower them at a very young age, but not just like now and we enter the IGF field and we realize the importance. No, but we start we should start it at a very young age so we can take it as a digital rise, like human rights. So it's very important. So just add a point here, yes. All right, then Martin. Okay, Juliana. Hello, I just wanted to um, comment on my colleague's uh, comment. Uh, when it comes to, when I enter the IG field, I always received a lot of incentives to continue to, to be working on that but on a volunteer basis. And I, I just wanted to, to add that uh, working as a volunteer is also a privilege because nobody, not everybody has the means to support themselves. Uh, and most of us, like from the global south, we have to work in jobs and at the same time volunteer and at the same time finish our studies. And that makes, sometimes makes it impossible 
for people to continue involved in this ecosystem. So I think, uh, I think it's important, of course, and I'm more than willing to do volunteer work. Guilherme and I, for example, we just published a book on a volunteer basis. Uh, so sometimes uh, when you're not volunteer, it's not only because you don't want to. It's not because you don't want to continue engaged in the field. Sometimes it's just that because you have to work, because you need to take your time to do something that is actually going to provide you with funds to continue uh, studying or continue doing whatever it is that you were doing before entering the IG ecosystem. So uh, when I tell that uh, volunteer is important, but at the same time, it has to be seen as well uh, as a privilege because not everybody has the means to do it on a full-time basis. People have limited time, especially in the global south. Like in my country, all of my friends that are involved in the IG field, they have to work as well. They're not able to just volunteer and, and go to their universities and, and keep going to the IGF when euro is about five times the value of our local currency. So it's just, uh, I feel like, we haven't evolved a lot, uh, the debate on how can we provide people with means to continue involved when they come from less privileged situations, when they come from the global south, when they come to, from places where they're supposed to work, uh, when they tell their parents that they're not working or that they're doing something on a volunteer basis, their parents are just going to say, oh dear, I'm sorry, but I cannot afford for you to, to continue doing volunteer work when you cannot uh, when you cannot study or when you cannot uh, help us with the bills or, or anything else. So I just wanted to add that this is something that we, had, we have to discuss further. We have to provide young people means to continue involved without relying on volunteer work only. Not saying volunteer is not important, I'm just saying uh, it is problematic when it comes to less privileged people in, in the global south or less privileged countries. Thank you. Thank you so much, Juliana, to actually voice out not only for youth in general, but you from the Global South also. We will have the gentleman at the back to give us a comment too. We only have five minutes left, so we need to be quick. Thank you. So I'm uh, telling you something about uh, the situation in, in Italy, that uh, I'm not uh, a young person, as you can see, but uh, I'm the uh, honorary president of the Italian chapter of the Internet Society. And we are promoting a, a lot in our organization uh, a role for the young people. And uh, we are organizing meetings uh, in, uh, in the parliament uh, or other occasions where uh, the young people are uh, making the principal role. And, uh, and also we have a couple of persons in, in our board of directors. And uh, here in, uh, in this uh, 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 IGF in Germany, we brought together for the first time 13 people <laughs> of the uh, young generation, and uh, some, a lot of them are present here, you can raise your hand. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, I think that uh, the idea of having uh, a intergeneration uh, participation is very, very important, uh, and, uh, and not leaving them to be a, a separated uh, uh, constituency from, from all the rest, because uh, we have to uh, promote uh, the, the new leaders. This is our scope. Thank you. I, I come, yeah, we don't have that much time. I'm so sorry that we need to cut off the queue, but to complete, yeah, from that, that gentleman. Hello. Thank you very much. The discussion is very passionate. I'm really getting very excited. Um, and I, I, we were just thinking with my colleague, Catherine, we belong to a, an European network. So I work, I come from the southwest of Spain, from Extremadura. My name is Antonio. And we belong to an European network that um, gathers uh, organizations working in the field of digital inclusion, not necessarily with youth. And we realize that there are no young organi youth organizations involved in this network. It's an European network that works with topics related to internet governance. 
So our suggestion will be that probably from the, youth, some, from the youth IGF, there could be a kind of recommendation to the European networks that work with um, internet governance uh, related topics, as all digital is, to uh, promote among their members different actions to include youth organizations in their strategies and in their voice to bring it to the summits. We have an annual summit where we gather uh, 60 organizations and we bring speakers. So probably, and there are no young organization, youth organizations present. Uh, there is this lifelong learning um, platform, European platform, that is also related to these topics and probably youth organizations are more or less active, but it could be more inclusive if we send a kind of recommendation like, listen, this is an issue, this is a topic, this is a need, and we as a network will be very interested also, also to have these voices. Even in my organization, I personally work with, with youth and I try to bring the topic, but as we see the need to have more presence, probably this could be something that could help. Thank you very much. We only have one minute left. I'm so sorry that we need to cut all the all the questions or comment here, or even we can't really engage people who joined remotely. But but yeah, but but then but then we have a lot of comments and opinion right now because this is not a one end thing that we end this workshop and everything's end. That we need to take away what we have discussed here to continue because we are not just here to just simply build the capacity of young people or just network for one time. But we need to work on what we have discussed earlier and try to, you know, pop the youth bubble and then we can actually, you know, get a network that connect everyone from different stakeholder group and so that we can actually minimize the gap that we have and then and you've and at some point even I'll say that may expire one day but we can actually contribute to policy making process or even bring our opinion um, and get heard seriously on the decision making uh, decision table so perhaps uh, any speaker have any things to add on today's today's workshop if no, then we will close really soon. Or Jaymon, you have something to add? Um, I just wanted to add that um, being a youth involved in internet governance means already you are doing something for youth. You don't have to necessarily talk about youth issues all the time. Yeah, you can just be the youth, be a Mac member, be a speaker. That's one of the things that you can do for internet governance. Even though you don't work for in internet governance directly as your professional job, just by saying to your boss that you will be attending IGF or ICANN, people will like ask, what is it? You will let them know what is it. That's what I do. And then that's what you get to know about the other people, what is internet governance. So start from you today, you can something? do what you want from now. Yeah, Thank you. Okay. So thank you so much for joining this workshop. I believe everyone enjoyed the discussion, I suppose. And I, I wish everyone who interests to actually create dialogues like that, uh, to reach out to other people in the room or actually outside the room because they have some other sessions. But I believe this is like a first step for us to work on together to try to pop the bubble and try to give some to, to work for, the, for our youth community. And just thank you so much again for joining this workshop and hopefully we can see more and more uh, workshop that is actually organized by you, initiated by you and you know some more workshop that might actually tackle on c focusing on the problems that we fa we are facing in, in the internet but not just talking about you only. I hope to see more you sitting on the table in the room but not like sitting at the back because you know in so many other workshops young people may not even have the courage to sit on the table. So I think this is like a first step that young people should find the value, find the role in internet governance. So thank you so much, everyone, for today. I wish you have a good day.